Hey guys, Richard Holdner here and welcome to the channel. Two questions for 3800 Series 2 V6. Guys, one, why did this combination, and we're going to go over all the data, why did this combination make so little power NA and so much power after we added the turbo? So let me know in the comments. Also, 3800, guys, if you're looking for some parts for your buildup, I'm going to be getting rid of a ton of stuff that I've already used all stuff that I paid for, but I'll make you a good deal. I've got ported heads, I've got a camshaft, I've got a Gen 5 blower with a 2.6 pulley, and also a 3.0 and a 3.8 pulley. If you're interested in any of that stuff, hit me up. In this video, we're going to take a look back at all the modifications I made to the 3800 Series 2 and Series 3 V6 motor, including all the modifications we made to the naturally aspirated motor, mostly intake manifolds, also, the modifications we made with the Gen 5 supercharger, including pulleys, intercooler, ported head, and camshaft. And then finally, we're going to take a look at what happened when we added a single GT45 turbo and intercooler. And the question is, why did this thing make so much power under boost compared to what it made naturally aspirated? And also, as I mentioned earlier, if you're interested in any of these parts for the 3800, I need to get rid of them. So if you're interested, let me know. Okay, guys, as I said in the introduction, there are really two reasons why I wanted to revisit the 3800 Series 2. I'm doing preparation for the Big Bang version of this motor. And also what I want to do is try to figure out why this thing made so much power under boost with a turbo relative to its naturally aspirated power. The other thing is for the 3800 guys out there, if you're looking for some parts, I'm going to be selling some of the parts off of these combinations and we'll go through that as we go through the power curve. So let's take a look what this thing originally started at uh, the motor. I had two of them. I had an L67 and an L32. This was the L32 and we started off running this thing basically bone stock. It did have all the accessories on it and we were driving the factory Gen 5 supercharger. It had a, we converted a manual throttle body. It had the factory exhaust on it. We ran this thing with E85. Obviously there was no factory intercooler. And we optimized the tune using a Holly HP management system run with the stock blower pulley and the manual throttle body. Our combination produced 289 horsepower and 292 foot pounds of torque at a peak boost of about, I think it was about eight or nine pounds or so. But here's where we eventually took this combination to and we'll go over all the parts that I use and some of those parts will be available to you. So if you're looking for ported heads with a valve spring upgrade and, and a fresh valve job and they've been resurfaced and they're basically ready to go, I have a set of those heads that we used on this. Also, I have a ZZP NIC cam that we use and we made over 600 horsepower worth. I'm going to be going over that with the turbo stuff. I also have a Gen 5 supercharger that we use and I'll show you what the power output was with a ZZP um, hub and pulley setup. So with that, I have a 3.8, a 3.0 and a 2.6 pulley. The snout's already been machined to accept the 2.6 pulley and I'll show you what happened when we ran all of that stuff. So here's what happened when we, this was basically the most power that we made just in supercharged trim. This was with an air to water intercooler on loan from one of the viewers. It was with this supercharger that I'm selling. It's a Gen 5 supercharger. Obviously, it's still working well and making good power. It was with a 2.6 inch pulley. It was with the manual converted throttle body that we used on this. And as I said, with an air to water intercooler, we were running on E85. Run with that 2.6 pulley, it made 448 horsepower and 434 foot-pounds of torque. The modifications to this combination included, basically the bottom end was still stock. Um, I didn't even change the ring gap yet. It was the way that it came from the wrecking yard. We did install a set of ported heads on this and I had these heads ported. They went up from, they increased the flow 20 to 25 CFM. Not a full, full blown uh, port job, but obviously every little bit's gonna help. The heads have been surfaced, a new valve job. And we did upgrade the valve springs on them. This particular set of heads have the um, LS6 uh, Beehive springs on them. So it will allow you to run, you know, obviously a bigger camshaft, which is what we did. We ran the ZZP NIC cam, the non-intercooled cam, as it were. We did run this with an intercooler, so really it doesn't matter. It's just a cam. Um, I'll go ahead and put the specs up here on the NIC cam. And then we ran the Gen 5 blower with the 2.6 pulley. And that's what produced this particular combination of power. And you can see, obviously, big gains from that. 
and it worked very well. So if you're interested in either the camshaft or the cylinder heads or the, the Gen 5 blower with the various pulley packs on it, um, the 2.6 or the 3.0 or the 3.8, I wanted to have a standard pulley also so that we could run it and I could compare the different boost levels with the different pulleys. So if you're interested in any of that, I'll go ahead and put my email address up here and then send me an email if you're interested in, and I'm going to use that money obviously to do more projects with. And also, I, basically, I just need to get rid of some of the stuff. And also, if you're interested, I have uh, a few other of these M90 superchargers, but not with um, additional pulleys on them, just with the factory pulleys. So if you're looking to do a low buck kind of boosted application with one of these stock junkyard uh, blowers, I have a couple of those as well. So hit me up and let me know. Now let's take a look at what happened when we ran the turbo stuff. Now that we take a look at some of the upgrades from the supercharged stuff with the heads, cam, and obviously spinning the blower faster along with the intercooler, let's take a look at the NA combination and then where we started from and then we can jump into what happened when we added the turbo and try to figure all of this stuff out. Um, also along the way on these intake manifolds, I've got a couple of these that I'm going to get rid of. So if anybody is interested in the basically long runner NA front wheel drive intake manifolds, I have both the aluminum and the composite one, which I'm going to get rid of them. We're going to demonstrate what they do. And we also tried running the inserts in them. So we tried running the long runner version and, and, and essentially what would be a short runner version. So this was the aluminum intake manifold in the later version of the front wheel drive uh, NA3800 series two and we were comparing this basically what I did ultimately was run the factory blower manifold with a gutted blower housing which will also be available if you guys are interested in that so this was our uh this here let's take a look at our test description here this was a stock bottom end with no ring gap this had the ported l67 heads with the freshly rebuilt and um uh, poured with valve springs and stuff. It had a uh, stock throttle body, the L32, but we had converted it to a, um, a manual throttle body. It still had the ZZP uh, 220, 230 cam in it, stock rockers. This one had the tube headers on it, which didn't show a big change between the stock exhaust and the tube headers, interest, interestingly enough. Uh, we tested it a couple of times and it didn't ever show any big gains. But this was the late model aluminum intake with the full runner section in there basically run on our NA combination and it produced 262 horsepower and peak torque was 271 foot pounds to give you an idea here's what happened when we ran the insert basically took out the runner section out of and I'll show you a photo of this took out the runner section out of the inside of the plenum and shorten the runner length and what that does is tend to improve power out the top which is exactly what it did and push peak power up to 269 horsepower but torque below 5200 suffered because peak torque uh was 252 foot pounds and as you can see for most of the curve it was down just you know better on the big end which is typically what a short runner does to give you an idea the intake that we eventually ended up running with the turbo was this. That's the red one. Um, and what it, we were interested in, because when we were doing a big bang, we didn't want to make a lot of torque production down low with the turbo. We want to have a big peak power number and limit torque production because we think that torque production is ultimately what's going to kill a piston or a rod when we're running a lot of boost. So this is the combination. Basically, it's the lower blower intake manifold with an M90 blower housing that we've taken the rotor pack out. I made this cover plate for you, which I'll show you right here, and you can take a look at it. And then we were basically just blowing through the factory throttle body. Ideally, I could have chosen the Gen 5 blower maybe, uh, but really since we're blowing through it, I don't think it was much of a restriction. We did a cool test when this, this thing was NA and just removed that uh, cover plate and ran it open and it did pick up power. So it wanted more airflow than the factory inlet into the blower was accepting in NA trim. But this shows you that the short runners and the shortest ones were obviously with the factory blower lower intake manifold. The short runner definitely hurts power production on these NA intake manifolds. But again, if you're interested in any of these intake manifolds, I'll put my email address up here. Please hit me up. And because I'm going to be get, getting rid of this stuff after we do the big bang on the 3800. But now let's take a look at what happened when we ran the turbo on all this so we can kind of figure out what's going on with the amount of power that we're making under boost relative to these NA power numbers. 
Okay guys, who's ready for a little math? Now we're gonna do the horsepower boost formula and find out where we started NA and then how much power we made at each different boost level and figure out basically how much power we were making per pound of boost. But there are two ways to look at this and this is very important. So this was our naturally aspirated 3800. It had the ported heads on it. It had the NIC camshaft in it. It had the factory lower blower intake manifold on it with the uh, sectioned out or, or we removed the rotor pack from the blower. We were blowing into that from the turbo. And we'll go ahead and take a look at our first turbo. This was 7.6 pounds. And we had run a our GT45 turbo with an air and water intercooler on it. Again, this was still run with E85, and we were running Dyna Water through the uh, stock manual throttle body that we had converted, and we were running uh, just ambient Dyna Water through the air and water intercooler. The we had run the stock exhaust manifolds feeding the turbo, so it seemed like it was working very well. And so, run at 7.6 pounds, our turbo combination produced. 418 horsepower and peak torque checked in at 387 foot pounds of torque. Here's what happened after we went up and boost a couple of a couple of pounds. So this was 11 pounds and this was ultimately 14.55 pounds. So at 11 pounds we produced right at 500 horsepower 499.7. And at 14 and a half pounds we produced 613 horsepower and 556 foot-pounds of torque. And here's the interesting thing. If we take a look and we subtract, at 7.6 pounds, we made 418 horsepower. If we subtract the 264 from that and then divide by the the uh, the 7.6 pounds of boost, we see that our turbo combination was making 20.26 horsepower per pound of boost. So each pound of boost added that much power, essentially, at 7.6 pounds. At 11 pounds, we got a similar amount. Um, you subtract the 264 from the 500, divide by 11 pounds, and we get 21.45 horsepower per pound of boost. So right at 20 to 21 horsepower. At 14.55 pounds, it made 613 horsepower. Again, so we subtract the 264 and then divide by 14.55, and we're doing a little bit better. We actually made almost 24 horsepower per pound at 14.55 pounds. So we're doing really well. We had we had more than doubled the power output um, at 14.55, right at 14.7, uh, one atmosphere. So it was doing very well. But here's another thing to think about, and I'll go ahead and put this up here. But if we take the difference between the power output at 11 pounds, which was 500, and the power output at 14.55 pounds, which was 613, we get 113 horsepower. And that was a difference of 3.55 pounds of boost. So we sub we take 14.55, subtract 11, we get 3.55 pounds. So if we take that gain of 113 horsepower and divide it by 3.55 pounds of boost, we actually get 31.8 pounds of boost as the difference between those two. So depending on what numbers you're using, we are getting a different gain per pound of boost, and it's all just math. Um, that's one thing to look at when you're doing these calculations. You need to look at the difference between the NA and the boosted combination, and then you, you can lo also look at the difference between the different boost levels and find out what they're doing, but make sure you understand they might give you different numbers as we see here. But the thing that I'm wondering is why was our NA motor only making 265-ish horsepower, yet our turbo combination was making at roughly one atmosphere, 613 horsepower. Now, some of that is due to the E85. We wouldn't have gotten much power gain, or at least I haven't seen very much power gain on a low compression NA motor like this 3800 using E85 on the NA combination. But so we're going to get some extra gain from the E85. So let me know in the comments, do you think that it's just because the E85 adds power on the boosted combination and we're looking at that difference? Or is the thing more efficient under boost? Uh, what's going on? Are we finally taking advantage of the extra airflow of the cylinder head? Is the cam, is the NIC cam act, uh, from ZZP actually a really good turbo cam and it's ultra efficient as we go up and boost? Let me know what you guys think in the comments. But again, uh, I have some things available for this. We have the NIC cam. We have these ported heads, which are obviously doing well on this turbo combination. 
Um, I have this gutted blower housing. If you're interested in doing your own turbo version like this, I have all of that stuff available. So I'll put my email address up one final time. Let me know if you guys are interested in any of that stuff. And as I said, I'm just going to roll over that stuff and use it to buy more engine stuff so I can do more testing when we finalize what's going on with the 3800 and move on to a new engine family. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay, guys, let me know what you think in the comments. Why did this 3800 in naturally aspirated trim make, relatively speaking, so little power compared to the amount that it made, obviously, at each pound of boost? We got more than double the power output at slightly less than double the atmospheric pressure. Do you think that it's solely because of the extra, you know, sometimes when we ran E85, on a even when we compare it to race gas run at the same timing level if we run e85 sometimes we can pick up 25 30 35 horsepower sometimes even more on bigger applications do you think that that difference is just the fact that we gain extra power from the e85 or do you think that it's something else is this combination and therefore our other combinations even more receptive to boost than the formula would suggest obviously i'm not complaining <laughs> whenever we make more power especially more power per pound to boost depending on how we did our math when we make more power that's always good but when we do that i also like to know why so let me know what you guys think in the comments and obviously we're now going to be pushing forward to try to get this thing to make even more power so i'm looking at a different camshaft we're going to put mls gaskets on it the head studs and then basically turn the boost up until we find a breaking point of either like a piston or a connecting rod or we'll kind of see what happens i'm Richard make sure to like share subscribe ring the bell do all that stuff and if you're interested in any of those things that I mentioned, like the heads or cam intake manifolds, whatever from the 3800 project, let me know because I've got to get it out of my storage after we do the Big Bang.